Hey, how you doing everybody? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. We have so many things to go over with you today, so uh, let's get right into it. We're doing a show. You okay? Yeah, yeah we're good. <laughs> we're talking about games of July. Uh, by the way, happy Independence Day, America. Woohoo! Just America, America, though. Just America. <laughs> America. Uh, <laughs> all right, so games of July, we're going to talk about more E3 stuff. Again, we gave out 23 awards at this year's E3. There were so many games. They're all right we just here have on to, the couch. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to short, but share more of those with you. Uh, my name is Will. This is Nine. Yo. You have Gage. Hi. And Sam. Hey. Games of July, let's talk about this. Go, go, Godzilla. It's not the name of the game. Go, go, Godzilla. It is a great song. It's Please, Godzilla. No singing. <laughs> History show. All right, Godzilla, are you going to play this game or what? Probably. I yeah. like monster games. Godzilla's cool. He's my homie. What do we know about this game? I know he's a monster. I know he crushes stuff. The rampage kind of yeah. through the streets. I'm all for that because I love Rampage. We had a chance to play it at E3 and I just didn't take the chance because we were busy. Yeah. We were just a little overbooked this year for so, E3. I bet. Get game comes out on the 14th. Should be good. We'll see. Um, God of War 3 remake uh, coming out also on the 14th. Totally on board with this. Yeah. Awesome game. I'm assuming you're going to pick that up. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> that, I'm picking that game up, and that's the reason why I'm not playing Godzilla. Is it depends on if that by God of War. for him or not. <laughs> it depends if I owe nine a game. <laughs> it's a bet going, by the way. <laughs> so, so, Which is over but you haven't played any of them, right? None of them. I can't wait for you to get into the series. Really want to, so I'm glad yeah. I'm getting a chance to play at least the third one of God of War. That's right. And I'm also glad that Uncharted's got their collection coming out. Thank you, Sony. Yeah. We're right yeah. doing that. Um, you also have Rory McElroy's PGA Tour coming out. I actually, I think I'm going to pick this game up finally. Um, For the fantasy stuff? Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> that my favorite part. That stuff looks awesome. That looks amazing. I, want to golf I don't even like it. golf, and I, that looked amazing. You know, yeah. it looked like, like mini golf on crack. Yeah, I exactly. mean. Exactly. You know. Uh, like it just looks awesome. The, the the Tiger Woods games, I like Tiger Woods, I love Tiger Woods, but uh, the games were okay. It just didn't, nothing drove me to go yeah. want to get it. Yeah. But I remember playing the Tiger Woods games back in the GameCube back in the day, playing those fantasy courses. That was a lot of fun for me. Yeah. So I'm going to pick that up. Um, I know you guys at E3 this year had a chance to look at King's Quest. That comes out this month. Looks really cool. It's yeah. really interesting the it's way they did it. So and cool. Sam, you said it was the first chapter. It's the first chapter. It's episodic. Episodic. Um, yeah. But it's not like your typical episodic games. It's not your like, oh, this is going to take me an hour and I'm done with it. It's 30 hours yeah. worth yeah, of gameplay. Said, and nine, I know you said that all the characters were like hand-drawn or something like that. No, the all, all the textures in the game are hand-painted. Hand it's all watercolor hand-painted. And then they awesome. rescan them back into the computer. But no, we were talking to the guy and That's he cool. said I that know, he yeah. sat down to write the script and he kept like getting new characters and whatnot. And by the time the end of the first script was done, it was 684 pages long. That's just the first chapter. That's just for the first chapter. That's not the whole game. And nice. That's the first chapter coming out so this that month. that translates yeah. to a lot. A yes. lot of gameplay. Christopher Lloyd, all kinds of I mean, of the, the voice actors. acting yeah. on this is amazing. Like, yeah. they've got quality people, and you'll be like, oh, I know that played, voice. They got the guy that played Gaston in yeah. Beauty and the Beast, the guy from that plays Voices Rex in Toy Story. Um, Christopher Lloyd's in it. Um, child actors are playing in this, which As is the first children, for video games. Most child actors are just auto tune cool. voices. So a beloved franchise from way back when, but well, hopefully that's going to be good. That might be worth checking out. Also, you have F1 2015 coming out. Yeah. 2015. I want to play League. that F1 game. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Rocket League. Uh, Rocket League's cool. Looking. Rocket League's cool. I played the PS4 beta. Oh, a lot mean, of fun. It was a lot of fun. Should have told me you're in on that beta. I would like to have come. Oh, I didn't. Know. I thought it was one of my niche games that nobody else wanted to play. I know about Rocket League. Rocket League. It's League's so cool. much fun. But you guys also not very um, good though. To, to, to oh. switch gears from it, you, I know you also had an interview with uh, Square for Deus Ex. Tell us a little bit about that. We didn't get the interview because we were short on time, or, uh, we but we the, did get to see it. The um, presentation. By far, hands down, without a doubt, the best voice acting I have ever seen in a game anywhere. So she just said that about King's Quest. No, she said it was good. It was really good. She said okay. it was the best. You guys need to get scores straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, when when they talk and they form words, they form the actual letters in the words versus just like preset sculpts. Yeah. Which is what ha you, it's usually done with blend shapes. Yeah. Which if you don't know anything about, they set up preset shapes for sounds that are commonly used in words, and just kind of mix the sliders together to make it look like they're talking. Not these guys. Yeah. These guys went all out and formed every single syllable and vowel. And the gameplay is different as oh, well. Oh my goodness. Um, you Lots you of cool actually stuff. can play the way you want to play. If you want to go in guns blazing, you can go in guns blazing. It's going to be hard. But you can do but it. But you can do it. Um, or if you want to do 100% stealth, 
you can do 100% stealth. And so still do the, the takedowns and all that stuff that removes you from cover, but you can still do it in a stealth manner now. Yeah. It's like a non-lethal playthrough. Yeah, you can do a completely non-lethal playthrough. You can murder, death, kill everybody. Um, you can go completely stealth and not be seen the entire game. The, and the possibilities are endless with this. And game. how you play the game affects the game. The story it changes. It changes ah. on how on how you play. So I like that if dynamic. you kill somebody that you're not supposed to kill, it will. There's an equal and opposite reaction right. later down the line. Nice. Boss battles are new and different as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can now influence boss battles through speech. Oh, that's really cool. It's really cool. That's very cool, actually. If you're a smooth talker, you can take him out non-lethally, or you can make him really mad and <laughs> bring he'll bring his cavalry in. That's a great concept. Or you can get them in one case to commit suicide. Oh, interesting. Not even have the so, boss battle. Yeah, so you it's entirely open to your interpretation. Excellent. Interesting. Very cool. Looks really good. I was going to compare it to Dishonored, but now, now no, no, no. <laughs> Now I'm not. We also saw uh, you and I played a little bit of Wasteland 2 um, from Deep Silver. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. We got to, to interview, we had a great interview. Brian Fargo. Brian Fargo. The creator of Fallout. <laughs> that was awesome. Great, great. Uh, uh, Wasteland 2 looks really good. It brings back that classic RPG feel. It looks like, a, a, once again, a ton of hours can be dumped into there. I compared it to Summoner, my first experiences with that on the PS2 because it was so big. This game's going to be absolutely massive as well. Huge game. All right, we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. More and more games when we get back right after this. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Uh, we have to talk to you about something. <laughs> You're coming to the Very principal's serious. office. <laughs> Uh, well, look, we we got to continue to talk to you about this year's E3 again. My name's Will. You got nine Gage and Sam. Um, Gage, I'll start with you. Let's talk about some more games that we saw at E3. I know one he wants to talk about. Sure. Which one? Battlefront. Battlefront. We can talk about Battlefront. Let's talk about Battlefront. Let's talk about Battlefront. Oh man. First impressions? Um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Be every part of it. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it look look great. Played really well, really smooth. Super smooth. Uh, we did. Play, it was a pre. It was an alpha build, so yeah. there was still some animations that were missing from the build. Well, yeah, sure. that's that's a given, given for any alpha build. Um, but they didn't take away from my experience. We played the Battle of Hoth. Yeah. Uh, we played for the um, Empire. Empire side. Yeah. And we lost our game, but it was like by that much. Yeah. Well, then good. You stayed true to the movie. I yep, gotta tell pretty you. Pretty much. I had a lot of fun. It definitely had a, kind of a Battlefield feel to it. Not like Battlefield. Um, in that particular mode. But the things that, that make it unique and, and that Star Wars fans are going to freak out out is when you get those power-ups and you can actually take control of the ATSDs uh, or the AT, you know, the ha the, the having the, yeah, the ATSDs. Both. They're both in there. TIE Fighters actually being Flying able to get the X-Wings. I flew the TIE Fighter twice, right into the ground both times. Uh, but it felt I cool was, when you did it, right? Yeah, it felt awesome. I got the ATST. It was just walking around, firing and stuff, and I was just having so much fun. I was like, finally, right. you know, <laughs> this is cool. Um, the my, my dream is being yes. a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the shooting mechanic was fine. I mean, it was just a third. It, we played first person. I couldn't yeah. play third person. I was third person the whole time. I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> um, everyone in the trenches lot. was cool. It felt like you know you're really in the movie. And then jumping in the ATAT, you know, being on rails as everyone you know is against that yeah. was actually not. Terrible gameplay at all. I mean, your ti your time for how long you're in there, so you can't just you know burn up time and kill everybody. Right. You get like 30 seconds, and it really added to the point of having an ATAT -AT walking around Hoth, just blowing up rebels, yeah. and it felt like this is how everything should have happened. And it didn't feel overpowering for the other side because we still lost. No, no, I killed good. like 20 people from that thing, and we couldn't. Yeah, win. yeah, I, I felt the same way because the mission was to protect the certain things. They we were supposed to destroy job. the generator, and I was just out to kill people, you know. So yep. um, yeah, you're not an objective player. Yeah. You're well, just team it, death. Match. I was just trying to experience the the thing, but the uh, that was only one battle, one mission. I mean, the game's got so much more to offer, so oh, we can't wait. So, so see, awesome. Um, Speaking of that, we did give that game our best multiplayer game. Yep, uh, deservingly so. Uh, deservingly so at this year's E3. Uh, let's get into <laughs> uh, some Call of Duty. Call of Duty. Uh, Call of Duty. Yeah, Call of Duty. I Black Ops 3. You said duty. You guys saw this one again. Yeah, we played. They let us play four matches. We with did. This. We did all the what? multiplayer stuff. Yeah, they let us go for four matches. That's insane. And especially for an E3 demo. Full of well, people. it's also the first time they were there too. So for playable. Yeah. Yeah. And this is. They say 
I even said this in the interview that we did, which is probably up, and you should find it. Um, <laughs> you should find oh, it. Oh, it was great. Yeah. They, they said this is the first time they've ever been this far along in the development for a Call of Duty game. Because they've had a, they got a three year cycle yes. now. So. And that gave them the ability to do a ton of new stuff that they wanted yeah. to do, actually have the movement system they wanted, and be as polished as they want to be. This Call of Duty is looking like the best Call of Duty that could be out there. It didn't really play that much like Call of Duty, though. I disagree. I, I think they, with that being said, <laughs> you got to consider, added, too, where Call of Duty is going into. Yeah. Well, they added some new power ups, they added some new moves. Of course, you got the wall running, some different things. But I definitely think it felt like Call of Duty. I mean, you've got new characters, that's for sure. You yeah. have, like, robots and, like, you know, different, that, that kind of thing. Uh, and once again, you get to the campaign multiplayer and uh, zombies. Zombies has a campaign, you got co op campaign. Uh, one of the things that uh, we also talked about with them was. Um, the fact that they're focusing on esports, they wanted to develop the multiplayer yeah. to to make sure that they were involved with that. So this this is going to be a good Could call. To them. It, yeah, I for mean, sure. The Black Ops series has always been great. So I'd I love Black things. Ops. Um, Rock Band Four. Uh, Eric Pope. Yay! We get them. We gave him best uh, co-op game. Yeah, hey. they were super yay. excited about that yeah. too. Like so excited, they wanted a hug, which was awesome. If you're wondering what about Rock Band 4, you got all new tracks, obviously, all new gameplay. They, they introduced a solo mode, which is really cool. I really like that mode. Yeah. Solo like, only, like no co-op, no multiplayer, nothing. Just strictly solo mode. Super cool stuff. Uh, but not to be outdone, uh, Guitar Hero 3 was actually Guitar very Hero cool. 3? Or, uh, Guitar Hero 3. Guitar Hero 3 did you go to, man? <laughs> it was a little while ago. Sorry. That's like six man. years ago now. Guitar Hero Live. Guitar Hero Live, rather, uh, was really cool. It was cool. I mean, it's another game that we played, so it's a lot of I was going to say, this is all you guys. Uh, but in the next <laughs> segment, you guys are taking over. Um, it was actually, you know, I was skeptical coming out for it. Uh, and walk and just actually being able to hold it, hold the guitar, feeling the buttons before That's I That's what I want to know is how did the guitar actually, like, feel playing the w and for me I've been playing guitar here for so long I was trying to use all four of my fingers but you don't you, 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 only, you only need three you can use three but I was I felt myself still switching between all four of them somehow just to make it work but like the it, I mean you have your top buttons your bottom buttons which are different and you have to it takes a little bit to figure out how they're different but then they introduce a third kind of button which is holding like the middle of it and then like holding both of them to make those are called chords well, yeah, yeah that's a, that's <laughs> an actual real world, guitar those thing are called chords. i know what a chord is <laughs> well you didn't know just now no i knew <laughs> no i anyway, mean but so, like, so was, what gage is saying there's three buttons on the top three on the bottom all kinds of different combinations six buttons total it does make it feel and play different for sure yes they had some new modes they had like Power-ups, like you had bombs where yeah, you could clear so you out just the clear the track and keep your score going. Yeah, and yeah just some, some different things like that. Um, and the, the wonky kind of audience view stuff, you don't really notice it no. unless you're look, looking for it. So no. it didn't okay. take away from that. It wasn't that, that was my biggest thing. thing. There yeah. is one cool thing that I want to know about. What's that? Did you guys get to see Guitar Hero TV at all? Yeah, we yeah. played Guitar Hero that was TV. Neat. How does that work? So you basically you jump in and you choose like a set list and then you just start playing. It plays a song, like just like listening to the radio, except you're playing along with it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I kept That's jumping good. in at the end of songs, which is good because it was a Green Day song. I really don't want to play a Green Day song. Hey, hey, Day. watch your mouth. I don't like Green Day. <laughs> watch um, your mouth. So that was good. But yeah, it was cool. And uh, switching back between those modes, between selecting songs and just playing whatever they give you, fun. Yeah. That's all right, all that uh, 2K, uh, we saw Battleboard. Battleboard was cool. Lots of characters. <laughs> Well, we got 10 out of the 25 to play from. I played I think as the there's like 20, Yeah, 25. 25. Yeah. And, it made, it felt, and everyone says, oh, it's a MOBA. It's like a first-person MOBA. It's not really. It, we played the single-player co-op version, which is five players. That was, uh, it, it was like playing Borderlands, but with different set of characters in a different world. Yeah, right. some new game. It was not, not too difficult to learn, but still enough strategy to be effective as a, as a, a competitor in the Everyone's actual game. Everyone's got their strengths and depending weaknesses. On, depending on, so you can team up with a certain amount of characters and then base your strategy based off of what powers those characters have, mm -hmm. which adds nice. depth to it, right? So uh, some really cool stuff there. Pick the room. we got so much more games to talk to you about right after this. Um, we'll be back. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, we're gonna talk about more, more games. Yay! My name's Will. We've got Nine, Yellow. Gage, and Sam. Still here. Hey. Nine, let's get into some Dark Souls. Let's. You actually sat in the presentation with Miyazaki. Tell us a little bit about that. I am things. so happy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so happy. Um, <laughs> that was probably the coolest thing for me at E3 because I'm a huge Dark Souls fan, and I had no idea Miyazaki was going to even be there. Some, some some quick snippets about the game. Uh, combat has been completely rebuilt from the ground up. It still plays more like Dark Souls 1 than Dark Souls 2. Awesome. Uh, there is a true dual wielding set now, 
So you, if you have two swords in your hand, each one is independently, and they're not just the same oh, cool. kind of move set over and over again. Um, that can create some I think, combat. but I can't confirm because I didn't get to ask my question. If you s pick up a new weapon, you may be able to keep holding the pickup button and automatically equip it. Oh, nice. Which is kind of cool. Yeah. And the targeting and lock-on system is back to the Dark Souls 1 style. So if you're using a heavy weapon, it auto-locks into what you're swinging and not what direction you're pulling your controller away. Very cool. Uh, Are these hard games? No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what's no, one they're, of the they're, trademarks. The difficulty. This game is definitely going to be a different type of difficulty. Okay. Showed a dragon on a bridge, oh, and there was two levels, because, oh, you know, that's dragon. Miyazaki's thing. He loves dragons on bridge. That's what they said, too. Dragons on a bridge is Miyazaki's just thing. You go up the steps, you can't go because the dragon's, like, burning everything. The dragon follows you now, Don't not break. a set path. So if you go down the steps and try and go underneath the dragon, no, he's going to burn everything in front of you. Awesome. So <laughs> it, the AI has definitely been ramped up in this one, too. Nice. So right. it's going to be a lot more difficult. All right. Uh, thank I you could go on for hours. Um, Sam, we sat through the uh, Sniper Ghost Warrior. Um, interview. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about that game. What did you think of that? I thought it was pretty amazing. Um, as a shooter, uh, it's very different than any other shooter that I've um, seen. Um, it actually, you play it like a sniper. If you are seen, you're going to have to kill people. And it's not like you can run in there and be like, oh, I'm going to shoot all these people. It's not going to work. You're, you're not that good. Probably yeah, gonna die. <laughs> um, You're not good enough. So, and you actually, the stealth mechanism looks amazing to where, you know, you actually have to watch what you're stepping on, yeah. watch where you're stepping, how you're wa walking, are you walking too fast, are you mm -hmm. kneeling, things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So they had a good tracking system, I remember, and uh, also actual time passing and all that kind of thing. So it's as close to as a simulator as you can get for actually, for a sniper yeah. out there. Pretty cool and stuff. And they'll notice your drones, too. When yeah. you set up your little drone, so you have to be careful where you're flying your drone. Uh, we also we saw some some really cool tech out there. I'll just mention a couple of things. We saw uh, Hololens was out there, Morpheus was out there, Oculus was out there. Uh, I know we had the the VR, the Manus guys, the Manus Machina gloves, um, some cool stuff there, and of course uh, Blue. Uh, Hillary Money, uh, great interview there. Check that out. Um, had the Yeti microphone. The blackout really, really, Yeti yeah, microphone the blackout for the gamers Yeti. and Twitch streamers and all that stuff. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Uh, so check <coughs> all that out. Mario Maker. I know you guys went to the Nintendo World Champions, by the way. Championship. Well, yeah. you're not saying it right. Super Mario Maker. It's Super Mario Maker. Super Mario Maker. Maker. Super Mario Maker now. And we sat there and watched some incredibly intricate Mario levels. Now, you guys were on board with this game, but when you came back from that, you couldn't you stop were talking out. about it. You, you guys, yeah. like, you it guys was amazing. Just, we had so much stuff to talk about Bethesda, and you guys were like, Mario Maker. Yeah, well, because before, you, you think about, you, you, when you think Mario Maker, you think of something so easy, as something so 2D, flat, get to the end kind of thing. My, so what they showed up in the Nintendo World Championships was levels of Mario, where you're walking through doors, you're up high, you're looking for a right tube to go through that's going to take you to another side of the map. You might be, end up on the other side of the flag, which you're not supposed to be there, but you got to figure out how to get back there by going through another like 16 steps. So it's like a puzzle game it is, yes. and a Mario game as well. Yes, it is. Yeah, it, but it's going to take some practice to actually be able to make something that, that intricate. intricate. And then there's that part. Right. There's yeah. the learning process. There's the becoming a master of what's going on. But it's also going to include, I think, test demo uh, levels for you to complete yourself. So awesome. you can kind of get an idea of how things are going to work. Right. I mean, I played I played the builder part, yeah. and it was like, you don't realize where, like, how things are, the physics, one, you've got to figure out, okay, if Mario jumps here and he's going to fall to this point, you know, you have to figure out, if I put a duck here or what the Koopa. Koopa. Blooper, Koopa. whatever <laughs> Goomba here he's gonna bounce here and you figure out where the coins go where the power-ups go things like that it's yeah, just sure amazing awesome sounds really cool I love with it uh, man Star Fox 64 as well we played that what E3 did you go to Star Fox uh, Zero. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so first he went. I was going to let that one go. <laughs> Star Fox Zero was cool. Uh, it felt like Star it Fox 64. It felt like Star Fox 64 for sure. Which is refreshing when compared to the GameCube games. Yeah, that I did, definitely. I, did not like. I love the little, the, the, it turned into like a. What, what do they call it? A, a land drone or something? It looked like a chicken. It looked like a chicken. Yeah, it was like a bird. <laughs> like it, they transformed. Yeah, it yeah. transforms, which is awesome. a Star Fox 2 feature, but of course Star Fox 2 never came out, so yeah. they don't talk about that much. I, I thought it was great. I cannot wait to play the finished product. The demo that we had, like we said, definitely had a Star Fox feel to it, um, so really good stuff. Plays good. You can change the... the um, 
What's gamepad. The gamepad. Gamepad. It has like a cockpit view. First you can view. you can alter back and forth between obviously looking at the screen. That's cool. That. Really cool stuff. Um, Need for Speed we saw from EA. Yeah. Um, that actually looked a lot better than I thought it was going to. I was really happy about that. Looks like Underground, which is my favorite of the entire. I think it's everyone's franchise. favorite Need for Speed. Um, but they said they've got like the Underground style customization with the Carbon's level of clans and groups and stuff and Size, open worldness. Yeah. yeah, the open worldness. I'm pretty sure they got big name actors and big name representatives from the car scene. Like you could tell that one of those. That Ken one Block. guy was Ken Block by a long shot. <laughs> <laughs> um, like so I think that they've got their different factions. They got the drifters, the body stylers, the speed guys. Um, what were the other ones? Tokyo Drift. By the way, we gave uh, <laughs> Mario Maker our best Wii U game and Need for Speed our best racing game. Yep. Uh, really quick, I'm just going to go through some of the other awards that we handed out at this year's E3. Save a lot. Uh, we also gave uh, the biggest surprise to Final Fantasy VII, which was great. Uh, original game we gave to No Man's Sky, fantastic. Uh, best Vita game we gave to World of Final Fantasy. Yep. Uh, we gave Unravel and Fallout 4 a ton of awards, which we talked about in our last episode. Uh, we also gave Street Fighter V Best Fighting Game. Uh, coolest Tech we gave to HoloLens. Best 3DS Game we gave to Zelda cool. Triforce. Uh, best Sports Game we gave to FIFA, which really did look good. Mm -hmm. I mean, th that was, that was crazy. Uh, XCOM, Best Strategy. Uh, best puzzle game, Ghostbusters or Unravel, give that no, to Unravel. Nice. Uh, best trailer we gave to Final Fantasy VII, and it was that good. Guys, that's all the time we have time for. See you next time. See ya. Bye.